It's launch week and in just a few days, Modern Warfare 3 will be out. We'll be able to grind out the game and all that comes along with it. So in preparation of all that, today I want to run down everything that you need to know in regards to the upcoming Modern Warfare 3 launch. From preload information, game launch times, how to find redeemable rewards, and everything along the lines from right now when the game is not available to where you'll be in about a week from now diving into your matches. That's what we're going to cover. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. If you're jumping in for the launch, what are you diving into first or looking forward to? Weapon leveling? Camo grinding? If so, you're doing zombies or multiplayer first. You're looking forward to any of the classic maps? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at Insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're ramping it all up here for the launch, and we'll have you covered with the best news, guides, tips, and everything you could need for launch and beyond. We're chasing down that super lofty goal of 550,000 subscribers by launch. So if you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. And finally, a reminder to use code Espresso for up to 30% off your entire order at G Fuel for all your COD grinding this season. All that linked below. But that said, let's jump into everything that you need to know about Modern Warfare 3's launch. Firstly, starting with when can you preload it? It has a massive file size. Maybe you don't have the best internet. So you want to try and download it as early as possible if you want to jump in immediately. Well, in this case, just like our campaign early access happened, BNet allowed users to start preloading the game ahead of everyone else, which was odd because it wasn't even at the marketed time frame for it at all. It was like a day or two before for, but still, some users were able to preload the campaign early via Bnet. Same thing is currently happening with the full multiplayer and zombies offering. A preload has been available since around 2 p.m. Eastern yesterday, that being for, again, Bnet only, but other platforms of Xbox Series X, S, and 1, PlayStation 5 and 4, and PC via Steam all have their preloads marked as available to start as of tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So for elsewhere in the world, that's 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern in, say, New York, Sao Paulo, Brazil, or BRT is 3 p.m., 6 p.m. in the UK and London, Stockholm, Sweden, and Berlin, Germany, both 7 p.m., 9 p.m. in the evening in Moscow. Then crossing over into the late hours of the night, you have Seoul, South Korea, and Tokyo, Japan, both at 3 a.m., and Sydney, Australia at 5 a.m. as well. So at any point after those specified time frames, you should be able to download the game on, again, any platform of your choosing. But that said, leading up to it, what about the game's launch? Well, the game, for the most part, we'll come back to that in a second, is a lot easier to figure out when it launches by comparison to the campaign early access, because campaign early access was all one specific time. For the full game, at least on consoles of Xbox and PlayStation, doesn't matter which designation, the game will roll out at midnight your local time. So midnight New Zealand, midnight Australia, midnight Tokyo, midnight London, midnight Eastern time. The last global rollout hour is 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern. So that'll be like 11 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Mountain time. So there may be points where you have a friend across the pond that could be playing the game a little earlier than you, but it is a global rollout to not inundate servers and to kind of casually onboard all the players jumping in at launch by rolling it out by time zone. However, that said, PC kind of follows the same parameters as for what we saw with the campaign early access, because PC, both Bnet and Steam, is one singular static launch time, meaning that yes, you will be quite a few hours behind those on PlayStation and Xbox in New Zealand, but PC will launch at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, midnight. So that is the only part that has a static singular launch time. Everything else is midnight local time again, up until you get to the points of North and South America. Now, there may very well be some early access here, although only for those that can end up getting a physical copy early, you can potentially access the game as soon as the servers go live. Usually in the past, they've been turned on two to three days before the global launch to stress test servers and again, allow for gradual onboarding as opposed to millions jumping in all at once. Though oddly, I remember last year was not so much the case. I kind of think the servers opened up only like an hour or two before the New Zealand midnight global launch. So could be off by a few hours, but I do remember it wasn't more than 24 hours before the global launches began last year. So might be the case again this year. It might not be because that was the first time that it happened. But anyways, digitally PC again is always time gated. There is no way around that. Though if you really are serious about playing a little early, there's that New Zealand account sharing method on PlayStation. And I think you can actually just switch your region to New Zealand on Xbox. I haven't done that though. So don't quote me on that. But that said, that's the launch. Let's talk a little about what you can expect on day one here. First, First and foremost, an update incoming, a day one patch or something that may already be baked into it, but differences between that of the beta and the full launch. Now, as of recording this, the changes have not yet been fully detailed in regards to what that will all accommodate in terms of multiplayer changes for gameplay, balancing, whatever the case, but it has been noted that there will be a change blog coming at some point. Again, maybe as this video going live, it'll actually happen. Maybe it'll be tomorrow, whenever, but it has been noted that we will get details about those changes ahead of launch here, sort of patch notes for launch. But 
Outside of that, you can expect to see some earned rewards on day one as well. Rewards that will automatically be credited to your account will firstly be things like the Vault Edition, stuff you already paid for. That Vault Edition including the Nemesis Operator Pack, the Fate Weapon Vault Pack, and later on in Season 1, the Battle Pass and Black Cell, as well as 50 tier skips instead of the normal 20 that come along with it. But again, that's for Season 1 stuff. That's a little later on down the line. You'll also have any beta participation rewards that you ended up earning. So the Appetite Wet Animated Emblem, the Operation Beta Weapon Charm, the Beta Tester Animated Calling Card, the MW3 Beta Weapon Sticker, the Did the Beta Vinyl, the Beta Ripper Weapon Blueprint, the Beta Proof Weapon Sticker, and the Tester Operator Skin. If you completed any of those, you unlock those in the beta, they'll be there on day one. Additionally, in the same vein, campaign completion rewards will be there as well. You'll have the Breather Calling Card, some double XP tokens, the Corso Operator, the Gilly Guy Calling Card, the Pathfinder Operator, the Toxic Drip Calling Card, the Dock Operator, the Skull Rhapsody Calling Card, the Jabber Operator, and the Soapy Emblem and the Brogue Weapon Blueprint, again, for however far into the campaign you ended up getting. If you didn't do that for day one, you didn't do any early access and you want to play it later on down the line, you can still earn those things, but just saying that if you already did, they'll be there day one for you. Additionally, any retailer bonuses that you guys have, that'll be credited as well and be there on day one. A very important detail that will be there on day one is that all your XP tokens should be there transferred from the existing Modern Warfare 2 tokens. So if you guys have been saving up your XP tokens the last couple of seasons, you didn't really care too much about ranking up those weapons with any boost or anything like that in Modern Warfare 2, because honestly, they're pretty easy to rank up as is in shipment. If you guys had any XP tokens left over, you're gonna be in luck here because you're gonna have that initial bonus to be able to grind out your weapons as fast as possible at that. And finally, in regards to any other bonuses, it has been announced that there will be Twitch drops available for those that end up wanting to watch their favorite streamers play and grind out the game around launch. A little shameless plug, I'll be kicking on the streams here again with the launch grinding out all my stuff. So if you wanna check that out, I'll have the drops enabled. But if you even wanna try it for yourself and stream, you can have drops enabled for your own viewers, which is pretty cool as well. You just have to opt into that on the Twitch side of things. But beyond that, it just comes down to the full game and the offering here that we'll have again on day one campaign multiplayer and zombies warzone and all that integration coming later next month in the season one update but campaign already in early access 15 missions about four hours to complete although I already gave my review so we'll leave it at that multiplayer you have a handful of different stuff of course all the maps all the classic maps from Modern Warfare 2 2009 you have the new ground war maps and the war experience you have all the modes of the new cutthroat mode team deathmatch domination search and destroy kill confirmed free for all hard point control war, gun game, ground war, and invasion, as well as hardcore coming at launch for all that kind of stuff as well. You have all the weapons, the SVA 545, MTZ 556, Holger 556, MCW, DG 58, FR 556, Bass B, Sidewinder, MTZ 762, Striker, WSP Swarm, AMR 9, WSP 9, Rival 9, Striker 9, Lockwood 680, Haymaker, Riveter, Pulmiot 762, DG 58, LSW, Holger 26, Brune MK9, Tack Eradicator, KV the Enforcer, MCW 6.8, DM56, MTZ Interceptor, the Cat AMR, the Longbow, the KV Inhibitor, the Core 45, Vernetti, TYR, the WSP Stinger, the RGL 80, the Gutter Knife, and the Karambit. That alongside with all the Modern Warfare 2 weapons, all 77 of those coming from the Modern Warfare 2 carry forward content. You'll have all the perks of the vest of the Infantry Vest, Engineer Vest, Gunner Vest, Demolition Vest, CCT Comms Vest, Overkill Vest, the Gloves of Quick Grip Gloves, Ordnance Gloves, Commando Gloves, Scavenger Gloves, gloves, marksman gloves, assault gloves, the boots of the lightweight boots, climbing boots, running sneakers, tactical pads, stalker boots, and covert sneakers, the gear of the tack mask, mission control comm link, bone conduction headset, mag holster, blacklight flashlight, LR detector, threat identification system, data jacker, signal jammer, hijacked IFF strobe, the ghost TV camo, and the EOD padding. And as we learned about as of yesterday, a ton of camos, over 900 of them, with masteries for multiplayer in Modern Warfare 2, continuing on with the gold platinum and Polyatomic and Orion from Modern Warfare 2 that you can still work on in Modern Warfare 3. You have the new gilded, forged, priceless, and interstellar camos for Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer weapons with challenges that aren't as monotonous as that of long shots, which is awesome. You have new sets for Modern Warfare 3 zombies and Modern Warfare 2 zombies camos of Golden Enigma, Zircon Scale, Serpent's Knight, and Borealis. And for Modern Warfare 2 zombies camos, Golden Ivory, Spinal Husk, Arachnida, and Bioluminescent. I'd still love if there's something at the end of the road here with that, like an Ultra Mastery, but we'll see how that works out in time but you see there's a ton of other stuff here at that
that. So you got all that and kind of crossing over into that zombie stuff. You have the architecture of DMZ mixed with Outbreak, mixed with a zombie's experience. So you got a lot on offer for day one. And if anything, you got a lot of ways to grind if you want to just get your weapons ready for Warzone and the new Urzikstan map coming in season one. Beyond that, in terms of day one content, the only other stuff that's included kind of shifts the focus to additional bonuses for PlayStation as part of their licensing agreement with Call of Duty. This, thankfully, is the last year that we'll have this sort of happen. And according to Microsoft, if everything holds up as to how they say, they don't intend to enact the sort of things for Xbox platforms next year. No exclusivity for anyone. Everybody gets everything and all the content offering all the same. But this is the last year Sony will have any sort of bonus. Now, what that means for gameplay? Well, firstly, they'll have an operator of Lockpick that is new and exclusive to PlayStation players for the next year, as Oni was for Modern Warfare 2. The funny part is they don't even seem to appear on PC or Xbox platforms visible at all. Anyone that'll be running the new Lockpick operator will show up for PC and Xbox players as a Milsim operator, and the weapon blueprints that come along with those sort of packs to end up earning more PlayStation exclusive content, those will be base builds with the attachments, but no camos. So quite literally, the files for them aren't even in the versions of the game for PC and Xbox, which I think is pretty funny. That is going to happen again until next year. We just saw that Oni was available and is being put into the shop for Modern Warfare 2, so it seems like that'll still be the case here with Lockpick. Additional bonuses you may see here for PlayStation include likely an additional two creator class slots, bringing it to a total of 12 classes rather than 10 on PlayStation. And come Season 1, the Battle Pass, if purchased, will grant 25 additional tiers in that sort of Black Cell bundle, as opposed to the 20 as per norm on other platforms. Thankfully, that's the only real exclusive stuff anymore. Like, we don't have Spec Ops Survival or Zombies Onslaught from Cold War being a sort of actual mode that is confined to one specific platform. Nothing like that, thankfully. The biggest of bonuses have, I think, really all come and passed already, that being the beta exclusive weekend. But beyond that, not much more. Now, beyond that and what we see at day one, following day one, it looks to be roughly a four week preseason period. Then we'll see season one kick in in early December. But the biggest part of that is the Warzone integration, bringing all the mechanic sets, all the weaponry, camos and all into the Warzone offering, as well as offering a new Warzone map of Urzikstan. But perhaps the biggest question mark for what season one has beyond that, we know, of course, we'll have new multiplayer content, weapons, maps and all but we don't know how the ranking system will work right now because it seems at the moment we're going to be from day one level capped at 55 or whatever our sort of max level will be before we jump into any sort of air quote prestige mode. But the official blogs have since stated to expect Intel on the prestige system closer to season one. So we'll see where we go from there. But for now, that is everything that you essentially need to know for launch here of Modern Warfare 3. And I think that is where we can wrap it up. So let me know your thoughts down below. Before we call it though, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel where Code Express so I can get up to 30% off your entire order here ahead of your COD grind. I can't recommend the flavors of like Hype Sauce, Strawberry Banana, the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Pink Trip, and my team Carnage. Our flavor Pog Juice was just recently released as well. I love all those and more. So if you guys want to check out the link in the description below and pick something up for yourself, again, Code Espresso can get you up to 30% off your entire order. But that said, again, drop your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to anything in particular? Anything you want to jump into and grind out first? Whatever the case, let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, do consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to have you in the community as we're going to have a ton of stuff upcoming. You guys will not want to miss in terms of the best coverage, news, guides, tips, and tutorials, all that kind of stuff. We'll have you covered here on the channel as we gear up for Modern Warfare 3's launch and beyond. But that said, thanks so much for watching. Modern Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.